I'm going to show you how to set up an Ethereum blockchain consortium network in Microsoft Azure. Creating and deploying the infrastructure and software required to establish a private blockchain network can be complicated, even more so if you're trying to set up a network that spans across organizations. With the Ethereum templates available through the Azure Marketplace, the setup process is simple. A consortium is usually formed when a group of businesses want to collaborate and share information using a blockchain distributed ledger. One member of the consortium will need to take the lead in establishing the first set of nodes. Once that's done, other members can deploy their nodes and join the network. Let's go to the Azure Marketplace and choose the blockchain category. Now scroll down and look for the multi-node ledger section and here you'll find Azure multi-member blockchain. You'll see that there are two options available, the Ethereum Consortium Leader and the Ethereum Consortium Member. For the initial deployment, we need to select the Ethereum Consortium Leader option. So let's do that and click continue. After a few moments, the Azure portal will open and we'll be at the Ethereum Consortium Leader deployment page. Click create and now we're prompted to respond to a few questions so that our Ethereum network can be configured and deployed. The deployment will create the following resource. Sources. It will deploy a virtual network with three subnets and two network security groups. A number of Ubuntu Linux servers that operate as transaction nodes are deployed into one of the subnets and are made part of an availability set to ensure high availability. These nodes are accessible externally through an Azure load balancer. Applications can use these nodes to submit transactions or execute smart contracts. Additional Ubuntu Linux servers are deployed to the second subnet. These act as mining nodes and are placed into a subnet that cannot be reached from outside the network, which provides an extra layer of security for these nodes. The third subnet is used to deploy a virtual network gateway which will be used to connect other consortium members. Let's configure the deployment options for our Ethereum consortium leader. The resource prefix can be up to six characters long and will just provide part of the name used when creating the resources deployed as part of this template. You can use any name or character string that makes sense for you. A default username is suggested for the administrator account that will be created on the virtual machines. I'll stick with the default of getAdmin. Next, I choose the authentication method I'll use when establishing an SSH connection to the servers. I either upload an SSH public key for the administrator account or I can provide a password. I'll go with a password in this instance. My current Azure subscription is selected already and I'll create a new resource group into which all of the new Azure resources that this template creates will be deployed into and then I'll choose the Azure region where I want to deploy. Next, I need to answer some questions about the network that we're going to deploy. Each consortium member will need a unique number to identify them. The default value is zero, which is fine for the first deployment. You can choose a different number if you want. Just remember that each consortium member will need a different ID. As mentioned earlier, the template will deploy a number of mining and transaction nodes. Here I can select the number of mining nodes that I want to deploy, choose the type of storage they should use and select the type of Azure virtual machine. For this demonstration, the default values will be fine. I also need to make the same choices for the transaction nodes. Again, I'll leave these at their default values for this demo. Next, a few Ethereum specific questions. The network ID uniquely identifies the Ethereum network that you are deploying. The ID 1 is used by the Ethereum public network. The acceptable values here are any number between 5 and 999,999,999. I'll go with this number I've just made up. If you understand what a Genesis block is, then you can change this option to yes and you'll then be prompted to provide the JSON data representing your custom Genesis block. Otherwise, you can leave this at the default option of no and a Genesis block will be provided for you. Next, you need to provide a password to secure the Ethereum account. This account is configured in the Genesis block and pre-allocated 1 trillion Ether. The Ethereum account will also have a private key. The passphrase associated with this private key should be specified here. You can just enter a sufficiently strong password of your choice in all of these fields. Just remember to make a note of the password somewhere safe. Next, some validation checks will run and if everything is good, click OK. Finally, click the purchase button and the deployment will commence. It usually takes around 30 minutes to complete the full deployment. So let's skip forward a bit. And here's our completed deployment. If we click on deployments, we can see the templates that were used to build our Ethereum network. If we click on the master template, which is usually at the top and the one with the longest deployment time, we can see information about the deployment, including outputs that have been generated. These outputs will be needed later, so it's worth making a note of them. The App Insight takes you to a simple website that lets you view information about your network. We'll take a look at that in a moment. The Ethereum RPC endpoint is the URL and port that applications can use to send transactions to your network. SSH to first transaction node is the full SSH SSH command needed to access the first transaction node in your network. We access the network through the load balancer, which will perform a translation based on the port number that we use. So if we specify port 3000, then the load balancer will connect us to the SSH port on the first transaction node. To connect to the second transaction node, we'd specify port 3001. For the third, it would be port 3002, and so on. Consortium data is the URL that other members of our consortium will need to know in order to build and connect to our network. We'll need this later when we go through the consortium member deployment. The two pair gateway entries refer to the location of a PowerShell or Azure CLI script that you will use to establish the virtual network gateway connection between members. You can use either script depending on your preference for 
PowerShell, or the Azure CLI. Finally, the Gateway ID is the Azure Resource ID for the Virtual Network Gateway. The admin site that I mentioned earlier is accessed via the URL here. So if I copy and paste this into a new window, you'll see this simple web page that provides an overview of your network. It shows my consortium member ID, the Ethereum account address and Ether balance, and shows our network nodes. In this case, we deployed one transaction node and two mining nodes. Note that each of the nodes lists a peer count of two, being the other two nodes that each node is aware of. You can see the number of the latest block here. The page will update automatically every 10 seconds. Okay, so that's our consortium leaders network up and running. Let's add a new member. To simulate what might happen in the real world with a consortium made up of multiple enterprises, I'm going to build this next network in a separate Azure subscription and in a different Azure region. Once that's done, we'll join this new network to the first one we deployed, giving us a two member consortium. As before, I go to the Azure marketplace, select the blockchain category, go to the multi-node ledger section and choose the Azure multi-member blockchain option. This time I'm going to pick the Ethereum consortium member option and click continue, which will take me to the Azure portal. Click create and I'll get a similar set of questions to respond to as we did with the leader deployment. I'll choose a prefix that will be used to name my resources, select my authentication method and provide a password for the administrative account. The subscription I'm using for this deployment is already selected. So I'll just provide a name for the new Azure resource group into which all of the resources will be deployed and choose an Azure region. This time I'll go for East US. I'll now provide a consortium member ID. Remember that this has to be unique within our network. The leader is using the ID of zero. So let's give this member the ID of one. The rest of the questions are about the mining and transaction nodes. So as with the leader template, we'll just leave these at their default values for the time being. On this page, we start by providing the consortium data URL that we can obtain from the consortium data output item of the leader deployment. Next, the VNet gateway to connect to is the gateway ID output item also from the leader deployment. The shared key value is a secret that you will provide to the leader subscription owner to allow them to create a connection from the virtual network in the leader deployment back to your network in the member deployment. When they do this, they'll be asked for this shared key. So just provide some secure text here and then pass the information back to the leader when you're ready to join the networks. As before, we need to provide a password for the Ethereum account. When you get to providing the passphrase, note that if you use the same passphrase as the leader deployment, then you will end up with two accounts the same. This might be desirable if a single organization is trying to deploy it across Azure regions and wants to share a single account across all nodes. Otherwise, ensure that you use a different passphrase. Check the details on the summary page and click OK. Then click the purchase button to start the deployment. As before, the deployment will take around 30 minutes to complete. Once it's done, we can go to the deployments tab, select the main deployment, and we'll see the list of output variables. Our new member network will have an admin site just like the other network we've already deployed. When we go to the admin site, we'll see that we're consulting member ID 1, but the status of all our nodes is not running. That's because we don't have a full connection to our leader just yet. The member deployment will set up a virtual network connection between the member and the leader, but the connection needs to be configured on both the member and leader sides. So let's fix that now. You'll remember that the leader deployment had two output variables relating to scripts that can be run to set up the network connections. Depending on whether you prefer working with PowerShell or the Azure CLI, you can choose either method. The process is similar for both and the result will be the same. So it doesn't matter which method you choose. I'm going to use the Azure CLI method via the Azure Cloud Shell. Back in my leader's subscription, I'll start an Azure Cloud Shell session. The script can be downloaded from the URL provided in the pair gateway Azure CLI script output value. From a bash command shell, I can use the curl command to download the file. And here's the file that's been downloaded. As you can see, it uses the Azure CLI to create a new VPN connection between the leader virtual network and the member virtual network. I'll give the script execute permissions so we can run it. Now let's run the script and pass in the four parameters it needs. First, the resource ID for the leader's virtual network gateway, which you can get from the outputs of the leader deployment. Second, the resource ID for the member's virtual network gateway, which you can get from the outputs of the member deployment. The third parameter is just a name for the connection. So give it something that makes it obvious what this connection is used for. The last parameter is the shared key that was defined during deployment of the consortium member. After a short while, the connection will be created. It might take a little while longer for the connection to be fully established. You can check using the AZ network VPN connection list command to see the current state of the connection. Now let's return to the admin page. You can see this is the page for consortium member one. So let's hit refresh and the page has now changed. We now see there are five peers being the other two peers on this network plus the three on the leaders network. And we're seeing the latest block number. If I switch over to the admin page for consortium member zero, we'll see that the latest block number matches. And that's it. We now have a multi-node Ethereum blockchain infrastructure with two consortium members spread across two different Azure subscriptions in two different geographic locations. Oh,